Unit 6, Video Lecture 2. Uh, if we take a look at the evolutionary tree, we can notice that invertebrate chordates, like lancelets and tunicates, are deuterosomes, uh, just like the echinoderms. But one of the things that we're going to see is they're going to have additional chordate features that echinoderms don't have. Now, chordates are animals belonging to the phylum chordata, and they tend to have four distinct features at some point in their development. They have a dorsal nerve cord, they have the dorsal nerve cord, they have a notochord, they have pharyngeal pouches, which are down here, and they have the post-anal tail, which would be down here. Um, chordates also have segmentation and a true cloam. Uh, most chordates are vertebrates, while they're the two subphylum, the cephalochordata and the urochordata, which are our two invertebrate chordates. The notochord is a flexible rod-like structure that extends the length of the body. It's, loaded, it's located just below the dorsal tubular nerve cord. Eventually, the notochord is replaced by bone or cartilage in most vertebrates. The uh, invertebrate chordates, the notochord remains. The flexibility of the notochord enables the body to bend, and it's this flexibility and presence of the notochord that allows the side-to-side -side movement uh, of fish-like swimming. The post-anal tail is a structure that is primarily used for locomotion, and it's located behind the digestive system and anus. In non-chordates, so the worms, uh, for example, the worms that we looked at earlier, um, the tail has parts of the digestive system inside, and the anus is at the end of the tail. In chordates, however, the post-anal tail extends beyond the anus. See this, the prefix, or the prefix "post," meaning after, anal, anus. So the post-anal anus, mo, excuse me, the post-anal tail. It's located behind the digestive system and anus. The post-anal post -anal tail, with its muscular segments, can propel an animal with more powerful movements than the body structure of all of our other invertebrates that don't have a post-anal tail. The dorsal tubular nerve cord, uh, like we've seen in the majority of non-chordates, the nerve cords are ventral to the digestive systems. If you think about the earthworms that we dissected, we had to move the intestines to the side. We cut in dorsally, had to move the intestines to the side to find that ventral nerve cord. Here, there is a dorsal nerve cord, so it's towards the animal's back. Uh, the anterior end, so this front end, will eventually develop into a brain, and the part down here will be the spinal column. In all embryos, pharyngeal pouches connect the muscular tubes that connect the mouth cavity and the esophagus. In aquatic chordates, the pouches contain slits that lead to the outside that were originally used for filter feeding and eventually evolved into gills for gas exchange. In terrestrial chordates, the pharyngeal pouches do not contain slits, and they develop into tonsils in the thymus gland. These are thought to be the evo this is thought to be evolutionary evidence of an aquatic ancestry. So humans, as chordates, we develop these pharyngeal pouches. It eventually turns into our thymus gland and our tonsils, but in older relatives, they would have developed into gills. The ancestral thyroid gland is a structure that regulates metabolism, growth, and development. An early form of the thyroid gland has its origins in the cells of these early chordates that secretes mucus that helps aid in filter feeding. Lancelets are small, fish-like animals without scales. Lancelets bury, burrow their bodies into the, shan, into the sand in shallow water. They lack color in their skin, which actually is only one cell layer deep, so it allows some body functions and structures to be seen. Uh, the skin is so thin that water can be observed moving through the body while the lancelet filter feeds. To get water... To get food, water enters in through, in through the mouth, 
and passes over those pharyngeal slits. These pharyngeal slits trap food, <coughs> excuse me, they trap food and pass it into a stomach-like structure to be, dig to be digested. The water then can exit through the gill slits. Just like feeding is visible, the movements of the muscles are also visible. The lancelet has a muscular block that allows it to swim very similarly to fish. There's no true head or sensory structures except for light-sensitive cells and a small sensory tentacles near the mouth. There's no true heart with blood pumping throughout the body by actions of pumping vessels. Often called sea, squirt, sea squirts, tunicates are named for the thick outer covering called a tunic that covers their small sac-like bodies. So this thick outer box would be the tunic of the tunicates. Most live in shallow water, but some can live in masses on the ocean floor. Generally speaking, tunicates are sessile and only show chordate features in their larval stage. So if we look, we still see the, we see the notochord, the post-anal tail, the dorsal tubular nerve cord, and the pharynx with the gill slits. If we look at this section here a little bit more closely, water is going to be drawn into the body through the incurrent siphon by beating cilia. Food particles are trapped in a mucus net and moved to the stomach for digestion. Circulation in the body is performed by a heart and blood vessels that deliver nutrients and oxygens to body organs. The nervous system consists of main nerve complex and branching neurons. Tunicates are hermaphrodites with external fertilization. Our lancelets were actually two separate sexes that also had external fertilization. 